Hi YouTube! Welcome to day 36 of my birthday countdown vlog. Four more days until my 40th birthday. So let's see, I was four years old in 1976 and um, that year the one thing I really still remember, um, it's amazing I remember anything, but I remember that that's the year that I taught myself how to read. And I don't know if it was it was right around the holidays, I know that. I know that it was Christmas time. We still had Christmas decorations up at the time that um, the whole thing happened. And, and the, the reason for that will become clear in a minute. So this either happened in um, December of 75 or January of 76. Because we usually didn't take our Christmas decorations down until February. Um, anyway, so how it happened, um, I loved um, storybooks. And my grandmother um, did not read to me storybooks as often as I probably would have liked. Um, I was addicted to stories, and she was very much, you know, a housekeeper, and she needed to keep, you know, she wanted to keep the house clean, so she swept the floors every day and vacuumed every day and dusted and polished and cleaned and cooked and all these things. So... She didn't spend as much time reading to me as I would have. I would have, if, if I could have had her read to me, you know, from morning till night every day, I would have. And obviously that wasn't going to happen. Uh, and I did get a chance to watch um, a lot of um, PBS. So when at that age, uh, she wasn't letting me watch a lot of regular programming. I was mostly watching um, PBS educational programming. And one of my favorite shows, of course, was Sesame Street. And I still, to this day, remember this clear as a bell. Uh, watching one episode of Sesame Street, and there was this one sequence where they did kind of a, um, a phonics um, lesson, if you will, with a little cartoon guy, he had these fat, stumpy little legs, and there would be four letters. Um, well, in this particular one, there was four letters up on the, on the, on the screen. And he went underneath each one of them, and sounded them out. Um, I already knew my alphabets at this point, and he went under the, the letter M, and he'd go, mmm, and then he went under the letter I, and go, eh, and, and so forth, and ultimately the word was milk. And he just kind of went through that sequence, pronouncing out, sounding out each letter, um, and then went back through and did it a little faster, and did it a little faster, until he finally said, oh, it's milk. Um, and the little light bulb just went off in my brain at the same time, and I was like, wow, I think I get it. And so I immediately ran to get my Sesame Street storybook. And I remember there was a story in there called, um, I think it was Dora and the Dragon, um, or Dora and the letter D in the Dragon or something, but the entire story had every letter D word imaginable in it. Um, her father, I think, was named Duncan, and um, there was just all sorts of D words in the story. And so I went through that story word by word, like sounding it out, sounding out the letters just like I saw uh, the guy on, on Sesame Street do it. Um, and, and like, oh, okay, I get this word. Okay, next one, next one. And until I could read that entire story by myself, which was the most thrilling thing. Um, as soon as I got through the entire story, and it was actually a rather long story, I think it was like three full pages of, of text with a few pictures here and there. I ran with, with the book to my grandmother and I said, Omi, Omi, I want to read you a story. I was just over the moon that I could actually say that. And she was skeptical. She said, okay, fine, let's go sit down. You read me the story. And I used my finger with every word so she knew I would, which word I was reading. Um, and, and told her, like, you know, and I read the entire story from front, from start to finish. And her her jaw, like, dropped to the floor. She was like, no, you, you must have memorized that. It was a long story to memorize, but you must have memorized that. Come here and, and, and see if you can read something else. And this is how I knew it was Christmas time uh, when, when this happened, because the next thing she had me read, we had a, um, a felt um, Christmas tree-shaped um, decoration on the wall 
and it had pockets in it that could hold Christmas cards. And on, um, on the pockets, on the outside of the pockets, it said, uh, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. And so she had me read that word for word. And then she pulled out something else and something else, and I don't remember what else she pulled out, but she had me try and read several different things. And, you know, yeah, I, I, I had to sound out the new words I didn't recognize, but I was reading them. And she was absolutely stunned <laughs> by this. But after, after that day, she, I mean, she still read me stories sometimes, but after that day, I became a voracious reader, and I read everything I could get my hands on. And that's one of the reasons why once I kind of got through every single um, children's book um, I had and, and in the house, my grandmother did get me a library card and I got to go through a lot of the children's books at the public library. But eventually I started getting bored with children's books. Um, and that's when I started getting my hands on my mom's books. And as I said in the previous video, I was reading her Barbara Cartland's. Um, until my mom gave me um, the, the copy of A Princess of Mars by Edgar Rice Burroughs, uh, which started my love of science fiction. And throughout my childhood, um, I spent more time indoors reading than I ever did playing outside. Um, I did sometimes like to play outside in the backyard. I was a bit of a tomboy, um, even though I was a city girl, but I did like to play with the mud and, and play with the ants and stuff in the backyard. Um, but. I'd say nine times out of ten you'd find me in, in a corner in the house reading more than anything else. Um, enough that my grandmother actually would sometimes yell at me that I didn't spend enough time outside. And I'd yell back saying, well, at least I'm not doing drugs. <laughs> so my addiction was books. Um, and, and my argument, obviously, uh, a good one is, you know, hey, if, if this is my vice, it's one of the least harmful ones out there. So, anyway, that is the, the big memory I have of being four years old. Uh, until tomorrow, bye.